exactly what is meant by words and phrases. So I think it's appropriate for us to sort of figure out what that phrase cancel culture means. Is it new or is it something that's been around for a long time and we just renamed it? Who gets to decide who or what is canceled? It was the summer before I started the ninth grade when the movie Grease came out. You may remember that movie, Olivia Newton-John and John Travolta. So my mom decided she would take my three sisters and me to see the movie. And we made it about 30 minutes into the movie when my mom leaned over and said, we're leaving, get your sisters, we're leaving. Leaving? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Olivia Newton-John hasn't even put on her black leather outfit yet. You cannot be serious. But my mom was serious. She was very serious. My entire school was in that movie theater that day. It was so embarrassing. I'm barely able to talk about it today. My mom grabbing her four children and walking out. My mom canceled the rest of that movie for me. And she was not the only parent I had who engaged in cultural cancellation. My three sisters and I could not watch Happy Days. We could not watch Gilligan's Island or Sesame Street. So you can forget about Dallas or Dynasty or Flamingo Road. Was that the cancel culture? Or was that my parents deciding they wanted to control what their children were exposed to? And once I got married, I actually came to long for my parents' rules on TV. They were nothing compared to my wife's rules. She can hear a bad word through three walls and a mute button. I had to check into a hotel to watch True Detective. And Game of Thrones? She still doesn't know I watched that. Well, I guess now she does. Is that the cancel culture? I think it's a lady wanting to fill her mind and spirit with good things, with positive things. If you don't like something on TV or in entertainment, you have the right not to watch it. The question is, do you have the right to make sure no one else can watch it either, or hear it, or see it, or read it? I think what frustrates many of us is the inconsistency with these new societal rules. A professional golfer loses a sponsorship for a word he uttered to himself, but if you flip the station to another show or another movie, you will hear people mock religion, you will hear God's name taken in vain, you will hear words that would get your tongue cut out in my mother's house, and there's no consequence. You take Jesus' name in vain and nothing happens. You utter another word and you lose your job. I think what people want is some sense of fairness and consistency. You know, the First Amendment says Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech. That relates to Congress, to government. It does not relate to how we interact with each other. We can set those rules too, but they must be fair and they must be evenly applied. Freedom is hard sometimes. Your freedoms may offend me and vice versa. Freedom works best, I think, when it is tempered with grace, with understanding people make mistakes, with applying the same rules to your own words that you apply to other people's words? Our framers protected certain freedoms for us, but they were also very concerned with the right of those in the minority. They were concerned that the majority would silence or cancel, if you will, the minority. Freedom, grace, education, understanding. I think we could all benefit from the proper balance of those ideals. How we treat the minority matters, because they may not be in the minority forever. Most of all, I hope we can apply the same standard of fairness to others that we want applied to us. Joining me now, former Congresswoman from the great state of Hawaii, Tulsi Gabbard. Hey, Tulsi, how are you? Aloha, my friend. It's good to talk to you, as always. Likewise. All right. I used to turn to you when we were serving together for guidance. Tell me what the cancel culture is and why we should be concerned with it. Well, you, you rightly started this conversation talking about, about freedom. When you look at the foundation of our democracy, it is based on this ideal, this principle of freedom, freedom of speech, freedom 
for, for every single one of us to be able to share our ideas and debate them, to argue them, to agree or to disagree, uh, to, to pick and choose in this marketplace of ideas those that we deem to be right or wrong, to be superior or inferior, and, and even for those ideas that may be misleading or dangerous, that in this free marketplace, we have the right to then defeat those ideas with, with superior ones. And others have, have the freedom to choose, choose what they want to believe or not to believe or what they want to adhere to. So when you look at this question, what is cancel culture? Cancel culture is the opposite of this. It is exactly the opposite of this foundational principle of our democracy. It means that in a cancel culture, you have some people uh, who believe that they are special, that they are superior, that they have the power uh, to be able to shut down those who have ideas and views that are different, who, who may follow a path that they deem to be the wrong path, and will therefore say, nope, we're going to place obstacles in front of you, we're going to silence certain voices uh, so that only those who agree with us in the path that we deem to be right is the one that is before you to choose. And, and the issue with this, there, there's a few issues, but the, the main issue with this is when you look at our rights and freedoms, and, and our ability to, to debate them and respectfully come out the other end agreeing or disagreeing, as you and I have over the years, it's based on the fact that we are all children of God. And recognizing that, we then treat each other with respect and respect this freedom that we have. So let's look down the path and say, okay, well, where does this cancel culture lead us? You see the final expression of cancel culture in Islamist terrorist groups like uh, ISIS and Al Qaeda who, who, who uh, basically go and behead those who are in, they deem to be infidels or, or heretics in order to silence them, in order to protect others from being misled by, by those heretical ideas in, in the eyes of an ISIS or, or uh, Al Qaeda. And so when we look at cancel culture here at home, uh, we see those efforts to cancel or silence those that um, they don't want the people to hear from, those who may offer a different idea than uh, the one that those in power want people uh, to see or to hear or to be exposed to. And, and so this is, when we look at the foundations of our democracy, this is the danger of where this path leads us, unless we as individuals stand up against it. And, and that's, the, la that's the, the final point I want to make on this, is what can we do? Because I get asked this a lot. What can we do to stand up against this cancel culture, this fear-mongering, this bullying, that if you don't adhere to this path that those in power say is the right one, then you are at risk of losing your job. You are at risk of losing family or friends or being unpopular or losing likes on social media. This, this requires us to ask the question of ourselves. Uh, who are we trying to please? And this is something for me at, at a really young age, I, I recognize that life is short, uh, death can come at any time, and I was happiest and am happiest when trying to live my life to be pleasing to God, to my best friend. And so as I've gone through wow. my life, and especially in politics, the media is coming at you with attacks, political opponents, social media, I have always found that peace and that strength uh, in going within and knowing You've that been great, Tulsi. God you ain't has unconditional love for all of us.